Hey guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate it so much as always. This uh, interview with Bill Beretta was so much fun to host and to uh, finally make happen. I'm glad, I'm so glad we were able to make it finally happen. Um, but me being the master of technology that I am, as you know, I turned my camera off during it, really quickly into it, I turned my camera off. Now, it, it I don't know. I have no explanation, guys. This is, it's, it's a Dylan Postel thing. It's just me being me. So, hopefully you still enjoy the whole video and the whole interview. Um, it was, we, we deep dive into so many things, Muppets and other aspects of his life that are really, really awesome. Uh, sneak peek, he's a backyard wrestler. He might be one of the original backyard wrestlers. And there's a clip included. So, guys, thank you so much uh, for supporting the channel. Each and every video that we put up here, enjoy. I'm sorry, guys, you know what, I've decided I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the best. <laughs> that could be the best one yet. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I, I gotta go. The absolute best small talk <laughs> episode yet, and it starts, man. I wasn't expecting go. that. It caught me off guard. Guys, <laughs> Bill Apostle, I am here <laughs> with, man, a guy that I've looked up to physically and just <laughs> what he's done and what he continues to do in the Muppet world. Uh, performer Johnny Fiamma, Bobo the Bear, uh, most famously Pepe. He's, he's just an absolute legend in the Muppets world. Bill Beretta, hello, friend. How are you? I'm fine. Please do go on. Yes, legend, you were saying. <laughs> legend. Well, I said that about every guest in their own like space. <laughs> of course. So you're just one of the legends Got that it. I've had on. Got yeah, it. yeah. Got I, it. I understand. I refer now to I myself it. as yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm good. It's good to good to see you. Yes, it's always, always good. Um, so we gotta get into it. All you right. have been a part of that world, the the, the world of the Muppets for i'm sure to you it seems like forever and and doing some research i realized it kind of started with a job at sesame place am i am i right with that like well, in a well, roundabout way in a very roundabout way because i i never uh thought i would be a puppeteer or or involved in yeah. that world you know that wasn't my goal or i just wanted to be an actor i was always you know, interested in entertaining people. And so um, my goal was just to be an actor. And so at Sesame Place in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, the first two years it opened. Uh, Which to me is so weird to have an amusement park in Pennsylvania. I don't know why. I just oh. don't see it as like this, like Disney World or Disneyland. I, yeah, you're right. It, it's you not. know what I mean? Yeah. It, no, the, the biggest, uh, the, or the, rather the closest amusement park we had back at that time, it was a six flags uh great adventure it was called yeah. in new jersey yep and and we used to go there but this was kind of a smaller thing you know it's not like a huge okay. disneyland right sesame place is kind of a smaller and it was also an experimental thing i think they were doing rides that were uh motivated by the kids so you didn't just get in a, a motorized car and drive around you got in and you did things Right. You almost drove it. You pedaled it or you, you or, or you, you swung or you crawled yeah. in balls or you um, walked on a bridge. And, you know, it was all things that were motivated by doing active. They were active almost, rides like one of those adve indoor adventure parks nowadays with the, the trampoline parks. Yeah. Right. Um, and so there wasn't like, you know, water slides and all that stuff. They've they've gone that way over the years. But when it first opened, it was just about the kids coming and playing and uh and our job was to help them play you know mm -hmm. like a lot of the, like they had this one it was the worst one <laughs> this pit uh like these two ramps that went up on either side about maybe 50 yards of, no about 50 feet apart 
And across the middle was a rope with knots on it. And the kids would have to hold on to the rope and fly across to the other side, right? And in the bottom, in the middle, were like wood chips. Like, I don't know. I was like, why are there wood chips? And, uh, and the kids, a lot of these kids couldn't hold on. And so our job was to carry them while we would run across this thing back and forth, right? To keep them on there. Otherwise they'd fall and get hurt. So I'm just, I met this actually, there's a reason I'm telling you this. So the, one of the first people I met on that uh, ride or that not ride, but that, you know, thing was Brian Henson. He was working there in the summer and uh, I hadn't met him before seeing him help running, sweating. Yeah. (laughs) You know, helping some kids stay on the Carry, ride. Carrying kids across a, a rope zip line. It's yeah, like it was, it was, it's what it was. It was a rope zip line going over wood chips. Uh, and kids got hurt all the time. And so uh, uh, so he and I met there and um, was we became he, friends. Was he involved with his dad's work while doing that? Or was he not yet involved? He... Um, the first thing I think he, although, well, he was involved, I think, uh, in a few different things over the years as they made the Muppet movie. Yeah. He was a part of helping Kermit. I think uh, he did um, Kermit on the bicycle. He was yep. up above, right, with this uh, marionette strings. So he was always, I think, involved. But actually, the year that we met or the summer that we met was, I think, the year before he did um labyrinth i think where he was working uh what was the character hoggle the character i think uh i think the character's name was hoggle it was brian's voice and he did the animatronic head for it um and there was a a a little person in the suit i don't know the actor uh but i i what was her name i can't remember her name um but uh they were great together um so so he wasn't like he was kind of involved with, I think, the business, but not a lot. Yeah. He was okay. 17 years old. We were, did he, he was always, 18 and I was 17. Did he, why, and, and did he see himself getting into it? I just think of like, like working at Sesame Place. Was that like his internship to get into no. the, okay. No, so no, it, was it, just, was, it was just a job. It was literally a summer job. He, okay. he was actually living in Princeton, New Jersey at, I think I'm going to get this wrong, but I believe it was either the, a friend or a relative of a guy named Jack Tate, who later right. I worked with on the show Dinosaurs. Um, but somehow there was a connection there. Anyway, Brian wanted a job and he went and he worked at Sesame Place for the summer. And so he lived on his own. I had moved out from my home. I was 17. And he and I both were kind of two of the few <laughs> uh, people who actually needed their paycheck every week like okay. like we lived off of yeah. our paycheck yeah you know everybody else was like in high school so they were just they'd leave them in their lockers and yep. you know save it yeah <laughs> yeah I was you were waiting rent. you were waiting at the office for the paychecks to come out yeah. yeah 90 i remember it was like 90 dollars a week is what we used to get huh and uh that's, that's what we lived on yeah so you mentioned jack tate and that that takes me right to dinosaurs oh, of yeah. like that you you played Earl Sinclair, who just this that that show was is still like such a like a memory to me. Mm. It's incredible because that mm. was when I was just a child and growing up around those kind of characters, yeah. and that might have been my first like introduction to the live action world like that. Yeah. Um, instead of Muppet Babies. Because uh, that right. Muppet Babies was my intro to the Muppets and my fandom of of everything Muppets, but yeah. Dinosaurs, man, that was huge to me. Uh, so, kind of tell me about that. Like, was it that was your first kind of main role? Was Earl Sinclair in that yeah. in that world? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, it was the first big gig I got. I, I moved from New York to L.A. and. Uh, was living in LA and Brian's dad had just passed away that same year. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we were in touch again. We hadn't been in touch for a long time since Sesame, you know, we kept in touch a little uh, every once in a while over the years, but then um, in 90, 
he came out to California because he was going to, he became the head of the company at 28 yeah. years old or whatever he was. And, uh, and had this show. And so we were hanging out at my house and we were talking about it. And he, he was, said he was doing this show that was based on the um, uh, the costumes and the suits and the animatronics of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which they had just yep. uh, done. And it was a huge hit. And so they were building this, they were doing this show. And I said, oh man, I'd love to, you know, pull cables or clean the toilets like Sesame. I don't give a <laughs> shit. No. I just wanted to be around it. You know, because I was a, an actor trying to get jobs yeah. as an actor and working. And and he said, well, why don't you come and audition, you know, for this character? I, I think I, I remember you used to do Jackie Gleason from The Honeymooners. You know, why don't you come and uh, <laughs> audition? And I was like, yeah, I'll do well, whatever. He was like, but, you know, you're going to be inside of a suit, right? You know, this is going to be like really hot and heavy. I was like, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. And I went and I auditioned and uh, make a long story short. Um, I got it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I think because I was probably one of the dumb ones who said, okay, to be inside of that suit. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Like, yeah, he'll do it. There's a famous picture out there of you in the suit and it just shows how massive oh. this, this suit was. Did they ever get a weight on it in total? It uh, had to have been a hundred, a hundred, a couple hundred pounds. No, it, no, was it wasn't, enormous. It wasn't no? that heavy, but it was, I think it was probably about 120 pounds total, but the head itself was, I think, 20 some, which was interesting, you know, to, to have to move and um, it had supports, but I couldn't, I had to move it, you know. So the, uh, but all the gears in that were right in it. Yeah. Was, in your eye line, was it the mouth or through the, through the latex or what was it like? Yeah, no, the way I could see was if the mouth was open. So okay. I, I used to rehearse with my eyes closed because I, that's how I pretty much, you know, oh. yeah, what, yeah, what it was you don't like think about that, you know, cause, cause they're all, when he's talking, the mouth is just, it's open and closing and the, and so I'm only seeing flashes. So I would kind of rehearse, not trying to keep my eyes closed as much as possible um, so that I could find things easily and make it look like it, you know, like it was, how real, does that work know? with the surroundings? That has to be another challenge. Yeah. And then just knowing the room. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. And, I, you know, if you watch the show, I've, I've said this before, but if you watch the show, there's a lot of times when Earl is crossing the room, the living room, and he goes, he's walking and he goes, ah, he breathes like sighs. That's so I could see the next 10 feet ahead of me. Ah. <laughs> ah. So if you get a chance, you watch movie it magic right there. That's right? one of those like, movie magic things that I, I'm going to love to get into because that stuff is Things you never think about, yeah. but now Monday morning quarterback, you look back at and you go, oh my God, yeah. that, that all makes sense now. That <laughs> all, all right. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's it. That's, that's a crazy, crazy thing. So that was, like I say, that was such a huge uh, thing for me in my childhood and, and um, first main role for you. And then you yeah. go into your first film of Muppet Treasure Island, mm. which is just an even crazier scale. Yeah, and a whole different that, thing. yeah, that was uh, the first Muppet production I saw in theaters, and it was life changing to me. Wow. Just Great it movie. was so much fun and such a fun take on a classic tale. Uh, yeah. What was the like? What did you feel the difference was mainly of, you know, a, a, a television role compared to now? It's a it's a film. Was there was there big differences at all? Well, the biggest difference was that I had, wasn't a puppeteer. And so I, I didn't really start on Treasure Island until after I had a little training ground, which was a show called The Animal Show that we yep. shot in England. And that was my real training ground for puppeteering and trying to puppeteer while you're doing a character, right? Because I was used to being an actor and I'm just doing a character and I'm very comfortable with that. But then when you start to think about you're doing all this technical stuff, you can't just be right. You're thinking about all these other things. So my training ground to try and find that balance was the animal show. And then fortunately, they asked me after that to do Treasure Island. Who who was I mean, did you just kind of get thrown into the animal show or did you is there a, a Muppet? training center or that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, how does that? Well, 
Yeah, no, it was. Uh, so when we were on dinosaurs, you know, occasionally, if you remember, there are some puppets on dinosaurs. Yep. And so every once in a while, I would assist the guys if I wasn't inside of Earl. I got to work with the best puppeteers in the world, right? You had Steve Whitmire on there and Kevin Clash and Brian and right all the Dave Goals and Mac Wilson, all these guys, uh, Alan Troutman, uh, Bruce Lenoyle. So, um, isn't that uh, crazy how many were on that? Like, oh my gosh, looking back at it, how how amazing full people. that show was. Oh my gosh, amazing that you never know. You'd never know. You <laughs> no, no. And you know, it's interesting. Um, sorry, just to go off for a second, but yeah. you know, when we would do the show, well, we wore uh headphones and we had a microphone so that we could I could personally communicate with my puppeteer who was doing all of the facial manipulations, right? So I'm I'm doing all the body behavior, oh. and somebody like Dave Goals is doing the facial mouth. manipulation, the mouth. I never the thought about lens. that. So the mouth isn't connected to you. The mouth is a completely separate Another thing. Person. Yeah. So we're, so the head is being motivated by another performer, right? Uh -huh. So we're trying to be in sync by milliseconds of timing, right? We're anticipating it just enough to make it feel like hopefully we're in sync uh -huh. and it's just happening, but we could communicate. So I had headphones and a mic and he had headphones and a mic and, um, and so when I watch dinosaurs, even though I love Stuart Pankin and his voice and all the amazing voices uh, on the show, I still hear all these people in my head. Like I hear Alan Troutman as Fran, right? Yeah. The way he would do her because he was the puppeteer for her head. Yep. And I hear Bruce Lenoyle's version of Charlene because he was the puppeteer for Charlene. And David Greenaway was the Roy. And I mean... Mac Wilson and Dave Gold, I hear these. So that's what I hear, you know? So you're, are you with those voices? Cause I, I guess I didn't even think about that. The the voices compared to the, the animatronics. Mm. Are you hearing the other people in the suits? No, you're hearing you yes. are. Yeah. So, so that was, what's crazy too. So not only can we communicate with each other, right? Uh -huh. Just Dave and I or Mac and I, yeah. but we could also hear everybody else. So when, when there was a cut, all you would hear was, okay, why don't you try me with anything? Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> like 24 people or whoever it was talking to each other at once. And then they figured out the Henson, boy, the workshop, unbelievable. Uh, they figured out how to then separate us out so we could have a private discussion. Um, but for a while, it was just like you, you're like, shut up. No, we can't talk. Yeah, you don't know who's talking to you and you can't get a word in because you don't want to talk over someone else. Right. And, the, yeah. and then and then ah. and then the super performers like we need we need to talk to each other, too. So sometimes we're close enough to talk through the suit, but they can hear us on the mic. So they're like, so you, you couldn't turn know? the mic off. The mic was always hot. Oh, yeah. 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 Ah, ah. yeah. That's that just seems extremely messy. Just any crazy. any kind of one two communication. Oh is, yeah, nothing was not out man. the window. Yeah, no privacy ah, at all. Ah. Yeah, that, that's crazy to me. How sorry, how that, wait, oh so so yeah. sorry. I mean, I jumped there. Yo, but, we're, no, but I good. guess just because we used to use hand puppets, and so I would yeah. assist, and and that's where I started to kind of learn. And I would go home. Uh, the workshop gave me this raccoon puppet to play with. And so I took him home and I just started practicing and practicing and practicing. And, um, and then I did, uh, some, uh, what was it called? Not fractured fairy tales. Uh, I can never remember the name of it. Something fairy tales, um, was like the first thing I did where it was Elvis as an elf, you know, I did this character and so little by little. And then when I did the animal show, I think they felt confident enough to let me do a supporting character and keep learning. Yeah. Okay. So that, that I, yeah, that I, I never knew if it was, especially like you said it, you were, you were an actor, never a puppeteer with that, with your yeah. background. So essentially getting thrown into the fire, but that makes sense. It's, it's kind of just a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, and, just keep and you working get into it. that show and that's great. Yeah. That's, just looking, looking for the, you know, a door would open and here's an opportunity. And can I do something to go in that direction? Is that a good you? Did you know there would be roles in that uh, space if you if you continued to work at puppeteering? No, I didn't. I, I didn't no. know really where 
what was going to happen. The only thing I think I just thought about was when I thought about the Muppets at that time, there wasn't any vocal representation of the characters that Jim used to do that were gruffy. You know, the ones that talk yeah. like that. Yes. You know? There wasn't a yeah. Rolf. There wasn't, there was like, there, there just right. wasn't that feeling to it. Yeah. Where they weren't ready. Some, there wasn't anybody in there doing that yet. And I think they were, you know, they were very, Rolf is a very special character to the family. And so, um, and so that's why I did Bobo. Right. Cause I wasn't really doing Ralph. Yeah. Um, I was doing like a tribute to the gym voices that I grew up with that I loved. I was always drawn to those kind of. That's what I was going to ask you next is how did you find those voices? Mm. Uh, and, 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 but that makes perfect sense as you almost fell in love with them of his. Yeah. The so, so, yeah. So that Bobo thing was like a tribute to him when we did Muppets tonight, I thought nobody's doing it and let's just see, I'll just try it, you know? Uh, yeah. But it was more about the character, not just the voice, but but that idea that mm-hmm. there's the, the gruff. I wasn't hearing anybody doing it really, you know. Um, so I thought maybe, maybe down the road, if something happens with Rolf, if they ever want to bring him back, maybe I could try for it, you know. I don't know. See what happens. So did you see uh I mean were there a decent amount of characters that almost got thrown to the wayside, unbeknownst to like the fans, really? that that they didn't they just didn't want to replace jim yet that because they were too special you know what i mean i don't know i'm not sure about that like how all that was handled i just yeah just from where i was sitting i just knew that ralph wasn't around and yeah uh maybe they were waiting until they found somebody i didn't know you know yeah we we talked about you hit on on bobo and muppets tonight and that was so the original muppet show uh was was a, just a classic muppets tonight i always say was my muppet show like that oh, was yeah. my generation's muppet <laughs> show and it was so fun because it 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 and watching like clips of it now it feels like the old muppet show with hmm. the guest stars and the different segments yeah. but that's where they introduced so many new characters and especially you got so many characters new ones on yeah. muppets tonight and yeah that's, that's where the johnny fiam and especially pepe really shined yeah i, I, I got to test them out that's where they kind of figured out who they were how, how does that work is it you coming hey i have this idea of kind of uh a little i mean a very very fun loves the ladies king prawn Mm. Or is it them coming to you with, hey, we have this prawn, give it a voice? Uh, different different things, uh, different ways, because it's all very collaborative, you know. Um, okay. But for, for, for Pepe, Pepe is based on my wife's aunt. Maybe you've heard this story before. I don't know. No. Oh, no? No, not this one. I don't know how many times I've probably told it, but uh, <laughs> my wife is was born in Madrid. Her aunt, uh, Tia Maria, was born in madrid she's from madrid she's not with us anymore but um she was a very funny lady she was this little mischievous spanish-speaking woman that i got to know when i met my wife first uh and she would um this is she would say okay she'd say things like (laughs) get get in the car beat okay you know i'd say okay or she goes yeah you're wearing the black jacket okay okay (laughs) Uh, so so it, I thought, well, this is an interesting pattern, you know, this, okay. There's never a question. It's always a statement with her. <laughs> and, uh, and, and she was just very funny. She's very mischievous. And she would, she would talk to me in English a little bit, but then she'd get caught mm-hmm. up in Spanish, start laughing. And then pretty soon we'd both be laughing. I don't know what the hell we were laughing about. Cause I didn't understand Spanish. <laughs> so I just thought, well, this is a really f- interesting character. And I started playing around with that. And one night at dinner and, in England, Kirk Thatcher and I were talking about her because he got to meet her. And the two of us were doing her. You know, we were both kind of doing her. And um, and I started thinking about... And at that time, we were talking about, well, we're going to workshop characters, see mm-hmm. if we can come up with some new characters for Muppets Tonight. That's what they were looking for. And so Kirk and I were talking about characters. And I said, well, there's, you know, Christina's aunt. 
and uh and so then i think kirk started doing designs or i can't remember if it was kirk or, or maybe at i i can't remember exactly but we started talking about her character and i said well you know her aunt she's like a little mischievous and she's a little uh shelf selfish and i said shellfish by mistake oh no and kirk, and kirk goes oh my god wait wait he goes wait maybe she's like a lobster <laughs> <laughs> or a, a crab or a shrimp and i was like no wait wait he's got a big attitude so it's like a king prawn you know <laughs> and, and we just started riffing on it and then i wish i could remember who did the act the the first drawings but someone did this kind of sketches of him and then um he was built uh by uh eric and and just created this beautiful puppet you know and then so that's how that one came out and all different ones johnny fiamma i was doing him as myself years before you know just as me and uh with my brother we would we would kind of do these videos with the two fiamma brothers uh so johnny was based on that and i had to it was interesting we did this i'm sorry i feel like i'm rambling on are you okay no, not at all. too much no, um, no. so when we're in england as we finished treasure island Brian wanted to do the workshop for Muppets Tonight. Mm -hmm. And so they had a rack of puppets, a whole rack of puppets. Uh, that That's weren't, crazy to me. That, you know, <laughs> all kinds of things like a warthog yeah. and a pig and a duck and a... Oh, whatever. yeah. Uh, and so we went on the stage and I think it was like Dave Goals and Steve Whitmire and Kevin Clash and Brian and myself and who else was there? Louise and Frank Oz. And um, we started just grabbing a puppet and we would go up in front of the camera and uh, hold it up there. And then Frank would ask, like, interview them. So we were just improvising, you know. And so one of them I did was I grabbed a puppet and I was doing it as Johnny Fiamma. And, and Brian got a kick out and he grabbed this monkey that had already been built and he grabbed yeah. the monkey, brought them in and he, and he was like his sidekick, you know? <laughs> uh, but the puppet that we used um, ultimately for Johnny was a new design because I was, I kept trying to use this puppet that I had, but it didn't look like me. Cause I was so used to me being Johnny, you know? Yeah. yeah. So the design was, he was redesigned and built to be a combination of me and, uh, I gave them a photo of Robert De Niro from Casino. Uh, so he's kind of that. That's <laughs> perfect. Combination, you know. That's, that's, I, you don't think about how uh, these, these, especially new characters, and then, you know, Clifford on Muppets Tonight and all of that, yeah. how they are imagined and then eventually come to life. Mm. Like there's, it's, it's, it's the thought and it just pops into the head and then it has to go to the art and then the building. And then you, I mean, you have, you might have the voice, but that can change tons of times. I'm assuming once you oh, see yeah. the, the actual character. Yeah. So that's, it's a, it's a, it's such a process, especially introducing new ones because there's so many uh, at that point already, there's so many characters that are just classic, classic characters. So yeah. to introduce new characters mm. is a process in itself. Yeah, it was really interesting. And then, and you know, just to talk about a little that detail for a second. Yeah. Johnny Fiamma, he was built in New York. Beautiful puppet came out, right? They got him to LA and I was working with him and I'm playing with him and Jane Gutnick. Do you remember, you know, Jane, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jane, I think was watching me working with him. Right. And when I would talk, I would be like this. You know, I had, I had like this smirk. Yep. And she goes, you know what? Johnny doesn't have that thing that you do. And I said, what, the Jersey smirk? And she goes, yeah, the Jersey smirk. <laughs> that, they're, 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 there's a new, a new term right there. We're making yeah. it up right now. <laughs> right? So, so, so like when I would do them, I'd have that thing, you know? Yeah. And so she goes, we're missing that. He needs. And so Jane put in that, created that detail around ah. his mouth, which gave him that attitude then when he would talk all the time. He was always had that kind of expression, you know? And so it's those little things that you don't little even think about. You nev yeah, you never. And it grows oh, and changes. Oh, my gosh. You know, all, it always grows and changes. Uh, how many, you're talking about the, you know, at the workshop designing these, how many um, designers, like actual characters 
at, at, at times are there? Are there, is it just a huge team of, of designers? Well, it's not a huge team. No, I mean, no. I think uh, at Henson, I, I couldn't even say how many there are. There used to be like a lead designer mm -hmm. and maybe there still is. I'm not sure at the, at the Henson workshop. I imagine there must be, you know, because there's a consistency to design and right and and detail and and a certain. It has to feel like Henson. Yeah, and and I think also like uh, Michael Frith became that person for Jim, you know, a certain style. But then Kirk started to design, like Kirk designed the dinosaurs, yep. right? But Kirk had been with the company and understood the feeling and the right. So it's all about finding the right people whether it's one or five who have that, who understand that. And then once that, once it's kind of drawn and designed that way, then the building is a whole other art. Yeah. You know, how do you recreate the something from the page like that? Uh, and, and make by it hand and make it be able to manipulate and, oh and be a character and have an expression and not to, you know, one of the keys I think to Muppets is that, they aren't locked in expressions. Some are, there are some that are, but there's a neutral to them that allows them then to go to other places, depending on what the puppet can do, you okay. know? Yeah. So it's, if there, nobody's, not a lot of characters, except maybe like Chip or something, or like, you know, yeah. big bug eyed kind bean, of thing. Bean Bunny. Bean Bunny is pretty right even yeah yeah right you kind of kermit is a very neutral kind of guy yep. but yet the expressions that he can get right in his face and um so there's something special about knowing how to do that and i i certainly don't but i can see it i know I, i'm looking for it but i don't know yeah. how you create that you that's know? interesting because you don't think of the neutral position just because you don't see them in the neutral position hardly at all they're always moving and always have a personality to them. But yeah. thinking deeper into it, they do have a neutral. It's just you don't see it. Well, well, I, actually, I mean, I think you I think you do. The, the neutral is the standing yeah. visual, right? It's it's Kermit just Kermit. Listening. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just being there, right? That that expression is his neutral. There's nothing, <gasps> there's no or you know, there's nothing, there's no, there's an expression, but it's a kind of neutral, you get a sense of who he is based mm -hmm. on his design, his unique design and, and, and what it's like in that neutral, I call it position, right? Same with Johnny okay. Fiamma, right? Same with Sal, same with Dr. Teeth, same. They all have that kind of place where you come, where you start from and just like people. I mean, if you think about it, when we're sleeping, that's our neutral position. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, huh. And and so, so, right? So you don't know what you look like when you're asleep, but I've seen. Yeah. It, and it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? Like that's you have. We all have a kind of resting yeah. position when we don't know we're acting, or we don't know when we're reacting to something. We're just kind of there. When our, just, when our kids are talking to us too long and telling this story that really yeah, has no end to it. That's right. And they just, they think it's the greatest thing and we're just waiting. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're So you're talking details about these characters and, and the different reactions in this and that to me. So the fanatic uh, I am, the, the world of, uh, that you've led you know, and, and Mary, like you produced Mary Muppet Christmas movie, Muppets Wizard of Oz. And then you took almost this huge step into what uh, is, is referred to as Muppet Captain, which oh. is incredible. Like that in itself. I, this I prefer going... general. <laughs> legend. Muppet legend. As we Muppet said general. I like general. It's more stripes. General. But like. This is it's tooting your horn and, and patting your back. If I could reach it right now, uh, yeah. I, I'm talking to literally a Muppet captain of so many productions. That's what's crazy to me. Like this is like talking to Steven Spielberg in those films is, right. is this because this is man. How, explain to 
possibly uh, non Muppet fanatics in that what a Muppet captain is because mm. uh, yeah, it's it's so cool to me. Like this is that's why this is so awesome to me is is the elite essentially. Well, that's very kind of you to say that. I I um I you know it's changed over the years because I think with more experience you start to do more, right? So when I first started learning, I learned from Kevin Clash, a Muppets from Space, um, and and Brian watching everything, you know, seeing seeing how things are done, seeing why do we have to raise our sets off of the ground? You know, um, how do you have a human and a Muppet stand next to each other on a stage? Not not in the real world. In the real world, it's another way, right? But on a stage, the floors, as you know, are raised up in the air. Uh, what are the heights of those stages? How do you how do you figure out the right height to put a Muppet a half body Muppet next to a human that looks right, that doesn't force the actors to always have their heads looking down completely, but at an angle that's high enough to be able to relate to a puppet, right? Uh, there's all kinds of things. And so I think as you do it long enough, you, at least I did, I can't say for anybody else who does it, but I just tried to absorb everything from every department that I could. You know, I think initially the job was to work with the Muppet Workshop and make sure that the puppeteers had monitors in the right place, you know, so that they could see mm -hmm. um, and then help, you know, bring the puppets in and uh, whatever necessary. Um, but as I watched other things, I started to realize there's there's ways of kind of uh, making the process go easier for the performers uh ideas of how to create the illusion right how to not give away the tricks uh here's something you know if we do this with a piece of the background in the corner of the frame we don't see that person's head yep. and it doesn't look like it's you know blocking anything because it yeah. fits with this, the shot i actually had a question about that is do you is that a pre-production thing that you like that you put together that because you got to be thinking about every scene and how every scene is shot yeah for sure yeah so usually what i do is i go through the script and i figure out first i go through and i figure out how many puppeteers we're going to need because you have to budget i don't but i give the numbers to the person who's going to budget all of that and yep. you know again it's all collaborative it's all many people working together you know so i'll come up with numbers of who how many puppeteers i feel we need for each scene, right? Because some people don't realize for Kermit to sip a cup of coffee, it takes more than one person, yeah. right? Um, sometimes two, sometimes three, depends on what he's gonna do. Is it, a, is it a full body character? Is that shot a full body shot? Is it a half body? Full body characters are mind blowing to me. Sweetums <laughs> is absolutely, he is one of my top characters because of just, how massive and how he works and just yeah. everything about full body characters is so mind blowing to me. It's so just, it's insane how it works. Yeah. And, and, and full body walk around, that's one version, but then you also have full body puppets, right? Yeah. So if I'm going to have Kermit doing a dance and it's a full body, you need more than one person there. You need somebody doing the feet. You need somebody doing his right arm. You know, maybe maybe that same person's doing both of his arms and somebody's doing the head. So it's you kind of have to figure out, well, what are these shots going to be yeah. in these scenes? If you can, if if you have storyboards, you're kind of assuming certain things might be a certain way. So there's a little bit of, you know, guesstimation going on. Um, mm -hmm. And then you figure out all of that and then you figure out, well, what are these scenes? How are these best played? Well, there's a lot of activity happening in this scene. So for the Muppet performers to be on Hollywood Boulevard, or no, let me let me put it a different way. Let's say it takes place in a kitchen, the scene, right? But the kitchen, there's people coming and going constantly, Muppets coming in and out, and a lot of movement and leaving and exiting and coming in. Well, to be able to achieve that efficiently, because you're thinking about not just how to perform, 
But when you have your producer hat on, you're thinking about, well, how do you achieve this efficiently so you can make the day, right? Yep. You only have so many hours in a day, and you yep. go over, you're in trouble. <clears throat> so you think, well, okay, to achieve this scene, it would be easier for the Muppet performers to be standing, to be able to move, to be able to get in and out of a room quicker oh. by standing. And that's why you raise the sets up, because that's why we we stand Right. Yeah. So that we can walk and move more easily. We can get closer to each other, get past each other. So that's kind of part of the design. And you think, OK, well, if it's going for the majority of the scene, if it's easier for the performers to make this happen efficiently and make it look good, then we should do a set that's raised off of the ground. If it's not a lot of activity and movement, the preference is still to be standing because it's a lot easier for us. But to help efficiency maybe cost maybe we do it in a real place we go to a real kitchen because it's just two people it's just kermit sitting in a counter talking to a person yeah. right he doesn't get up and leave he's just hanging out there well it's more affordable more practical to just go to a real spot mm -hmm. do it on the ground right <laughs> do it in the real world so to speak yeah so there's a lot of that thinking going on when you're looking at the script and what what i'm prepping as the Puppet general. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, so it's that. And then it's about talking with the set designer and the production designer and what sets are going to be raised, what aren't going to be raised. How many holes do we need to? Are we going to put a hole in this wall? Are we going to put a hole in these chairs? Right. I'm also talking with the set designers. How tall are the furniture? How big is the furniture? Working with the Muppet Workshop, are they going to be using props that are too big? So do we need specialized props made for them? Uh, versus the ones for the people. There's so many people have no idea. I mean, you you got to experience that, it. That, I, I'm, I'm uh, gonna talk. I'm gonna get a hit on it in a bit. That alone, my Muppet fandom was like, this is a dream, and this is so cool because I'm seeing. That was what I wanted. To experience i think more than anything was just how everything worked right. and uh be able to watch houdini perform you know and rehearse and that yeah. that was right. that was one of the coolest things uh in, in, in my experience with you guys that's mm. that all the all the prep going into just the shooting of it before the shots are even shot like mm. sets alone, but then they have to be sets for the Muppet performers aside from the actors in the set. It, that's, yeah. that's, I mean, yeah. so many layers to all of these productions. Yeah. It's crazy. People have no idea what it takes to do it. It's yeah. just so logistically challenging that, uh, and that's the thing you know, it's, you're trying to be competitive cost wise because it is a more expensive time consuming thing because yeah. There are these layers, like you mentioned, you know, so you're trying to, what I'm always trying to do is figure out how do we, how do we make this production feel as beautiful, magical, but also affordable as other productions that don't have Muppets, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the challenge so that we can make, continue making things. It's yeah. almost, and it's almost double what a normal thing would be not only the performers but double the set because you have to and and the, the thought going into it double the work there yeah we just you know we just finished doing muppets mayhem uh the, the new series and apparently we owned most of the decking in los angeles was in our sets like <laughs> people people there were other shows that needed decking but they couldn't get it because we had <laughs> But it is, it's amazing to, to you know, the difference, the yeah, difference yeah. In, in doing it. And, and somehow, you know, we just have amazing people. Our crews are just unbelievable that they just, uh, I don't know how they do it. They just work so hard. And um, man, uh, you, you just have never seen anything like it. If you come to yeah, a Muppet yeah. set, you know this, but if somebody comes to visit, which we can't lately because of COVID, but when people come to visit, there's nothing like it. They everybody across the board is just like, I've never experienced this energy. I I've try to describe like it. it. I yeah. try to describe the team, 
the, the team effort, not only that, but the moving parts mm-hmm. and how things are set up. And I just find myself going, it's nothing like you could imagine because yeah. it isn't. It truly yeah. isn't. And there's yeah. so many moving parts, so many moving parts. Yeah. It's two it's like, separate worlds. It is literally two right. separate worlds of yeah. that the the human actors and the Muppet world going on at the same time around each other while interacting with each other, but not too much. It's it's <laughs> so different. Yeah. Um it's like looking at this frame here, right? This image yeah. that we have. And and all that matters is what ends up in that frame. Yeah. Nobody knows what's happening under it, on the sides of it, over top of it, right? I mean, there could be five people operating you right now. Yeah. You know, yep. making your head nod. I, I <laughs> wish know? there was. Some days I wish there was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's all about getting just, yeah. this is it. This is where you're just trying to make all this framework, you know? That's, yeah. Uh, Making it work in 2011 was kind of a resurgence. I fully felt my, as, a, as a fan, as just, I was ready. The Muppets came out um, and it's, oh, yeah. I felt that that was such a resurgence of the brand and of these characters. Did it feel that way with you got to you guys as well, to the, the company and that? Like, hey, here's another kickstart kind of behind us. This is going to be big. Well, I know, uh, I'm, I know Disney was very happy and felt yeah. that that was, and they also got behind it in a big way. I think that yeah. helped a lot. They, they put a lot of money in the pushing it and making it a real kind yeah. of resurgence, like you put it. But I think for the guys, for the gang, performing these over the years, it was a, it was. You could feel there was something, right? There was something buzzing, but. We were, I think, more concerned that the Muppets wouldn't be thought of as has-beens because it was about them all kind of separating and they weren't together anymore and they weren't, you know, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, viable, you know, yep. like that idea. We were thinking, well, but we've been doing things. It's not like they haven't been around. We, yeah. We just, just haven't had the opportunities to do a big yeah. movie like this you know, for a while. Um, and so I think it was huge. I mean, it really, really did amazing things for the Muppets and for Disney and, and mm-hmm. you know, to bring them back into the mainstream eye again. Yeah. Uh, we had kind of been there, but not in this way, you know. It and did, so it was, this felt like uh, the the really big push especially like you said by disney of this brand and of these characters and all of that pushing it hey this is big and let's make it big once again yeah they had been kind of the muppets had just kind of been sitting there for you know seven years or something basically and yeah um we were doing online stuff you know some 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 web stuff and some um TV movies, which I thought did well, not great, but they did okay. I saw a couple that I loved. So it was like we're always trying to do stuff, but this was yeah, uh, just a big, and the and the cast was great, and you yeah, know, it was just fun. In promotion for that, now is when I get to experience uh, you guys for the first time because you guys, the the Muppet Gang, guest hosts Monday Night Raw. <laughs> and appears on tribute to the troops and i don't i don't know if you've heard this or if i ever told you um but i was so i was like used on the show here and there on yeah. monday night raw when these guest hosts came in i all i don't know why but i was like hey put hornswoggle with them right. great for me it's <laughs> awesome yeah but then i hear like two weeks before it's announced that you guys were coming i get word of it and i'm like holy shit, this is it. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to make sure that I work on screen with the Muppets. And so I started like a hashtag Hornswoggle with the Muppets or Hornswoggle oh, Muppets, yeah. whatever it was. And right. then I go, I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to get tattoos every day. Is that when you for, did it? Oh, for that? Yeah, yeah oh. I did. I ended up doing like two or three tattoos every day for like 
eight days. Oh like, my God. I didn't yeah. know that's when you did it. It's for I Raw. It was wow. literally for Monday Night Raw leading wow. up to it. Because I was like, I need to do this. And also, this is, in my mind, this was meeting the biggest actors ever to me. Oh. And then I was like, and then I, I I got to like introduce myself to you guys and meet you guys when you got there. And Dave Goals was like, are you the tat- the one with the tattoos? And I go, <laughs> you're damn right I am. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so cool to me. And uh. that was such like, man, they say meeting your heroes, you should never. <laughs> I threw it out the window that day because it was the <laughs> coolest day of my life. And it was so awesome. And then it was fun. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Ever a wrestling fan growing up or was this completely new world to you? Oh, no. Listen, I, my brother and I, Uh actually, he's the, he's the one. But so we started watching wrestling when, you know, Vince McMahon was a big geeky guy, geeky interviewer. Right. Yeah. Skinny, awkward. Right. The powder blue jacket. Yep. Right. And um, my where I grew up, I, uh, the first house in our family had uh, Gorilla Monsoon lived down the end of the yeah. block. I no. never met him, but he lived there. While you lived there? We have, we have, I never met him, but we were in the same yeah. block. Ah. And then um, we just used to watch it. My favorite was superstar Billy Graham. Yep. Um, uh, and so we would watch on UHF station. I can't remember what station it was, but back in Pennsylvania, in Marshville, Pennsylvania, we would watch wrestling and it was the greatest thing. And so my brother who used to make home movies all the time, uh, he would come up with ideas for us to do and he would direct them and run, you know, Mm -hmm. he made a wrestling ring in our basement out of just like string and poles and I have to show you. I wish were, I could show you it to were, you, right you now. might have been one of the original backyard wrestlers. This is the most. This might be one of the hottest topics coming from this interview. That Bill Beretta, <laughs> legend, was the original backyard wrestler. I'm going to send you the video. I have. Hundred percent. We'll insert it. <laughs> oh, we were, no, oh man, we were so bad. And and we had a, a really close friend. His name was Robert. And uh, he was real into it, too. So yeah. he would, like, flip my brother upside down. And and uh, Gene made even a, an audience for the background. He painted, like, all these characters on this paper and made, a like, an audience. And it was just really bad, you know, wrestling. That's so uh, inc- So we did Man, it as kids. We I am going to be thinking about that so much because I'm, I... I got to send it to you. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, Wow. So during that time, uh, Vince McMahon. Yeah. I, he never, it it was told to me, uh, he never once asked or requested photos with any guest hosts. Oh yeah. Except the Muppets. Is that right? Specifically because you guys then went on the raw set with the the characters. Yeah. And Vince was the first one to get a photo. (laughs) You never, I mean, they had every Bob Barker to Shaquille O'Neal to all these celebrities and sports uh, athletes. He yeah. never once asked or requested for a photo with them except the Muppets. That's because amazing. Because he respected everything that the that the brand did and the company did and Jim Henson did, which oh I was God. like, this is my boss. He loves the Muppets too. <laughs> <laughs> this is the coolest day ever. But wow. that's when I realized the eye line uh, for photos, because when the they were all together yeah. and you then I stand, let's say I stand in with them. Yeah. If a character isn't for sure looking at you, you'd say, OK, uh, Fozzie a little to the right or yeah. animal a little down. And you don't realize that. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I could be pointing here or here, but not exactly at the camera. Yeah. Yeah. But it would look awkward. And that's if, the if thing, not. Yeah, that's the thing about Muppets is their their eye focus. It's one of the first yeah. things you learn is about eye focus so that it looks like they're looking where they're meaning to look so that it's just not a random kind of floating character that isn't specific, right? So it's about where is the focus. And so when we do photographs, 
because we can't see what the camera sees, excuse me, like we do when we have a mm -hmm. you know film camera, uh, we have to have somebody ask to look in there and make sure we're all looking in the right direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, you ready for this? Come on. Yes. I'm gonna share. Can I share something? Here we go. All right, you ready? Yep. So it was channel 29. <laughs> There's not a lot of audio. I think there's just look at that. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you have an MSG microphone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was our uh, our uh, what do you call it? Um, projector microphone. I think. Yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna move along. Oh, the audience! Yeah, there's the audience, mate. Right? Now here comes, this is our friend that comes in. Got his With a belt! With a title! Oh, God! I'll go forward a little bit. Oh, here's me wrestling him. That's me. Oh, it's a tag team, I think. Tag teaming! Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, there's Gene brother into the corner oh ah, yes <laughs> oh ah, oh so <laughs> ah. bag him out bag him out there we go nice so I think he like crushes his shoulder or something. Oh, there's something here. Oh. I had to take a breath. <laughs> no! That's just the best. The cement floor. Hold on. Oh. There's, I think it's like, I don't know what it's called, not a body slam, but the, oh. Big elbow drop. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> no, didn't even get a one count. <laughs> this is the one where he crushes his body shoulders. Slam. Oh. Wait. Sorry, I'm coming. Oh, no, wait, there's a little break in me. Oh. Atomic drop, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> a oh, Boston Crab? A Boston Crab. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, he's trying to figure out what he's going to do. This is so good. Oh. Oh. Crush. Two stops. A bomb <laughs> driver. That's outlawed in wrestling these days. Is it? Yeah. I am mind blown. <laughs> mind blown. I, you asked me if we liked wrestling. This is so that. <laughs> this is why this is why I love doing these interviews, especially with people like outside my world, mm -hmm. because no matter what, I have such a connection with the Muppets. But there's always, I'm finding there's always a connection to wrestling. Yeah. Like the wrestling world has 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 touched every everybody, every generation. Whether it, you were a fan or your parents were a fan or your kids a fan, like my dad hates wrestling. Oh, yeah. Just but he supports me and he gets into it because right. he knows how much I've always loved it. Like yeah. he brought me to the shows growing up and he supported me through my career. Yeah. But he man. I, well, you know, he, he would be, too. he'd be one of those fans with a newspaper <laughs> next to me going crazy. Right, but right. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's so interesting how much wrestling uh, gets in other people's lives that aren't in the world. Yeah, well, and it's, you know, there are different, it's like the Muppets are like wrestling as well. You know, it's like Such there are different simple, characters. So many similarities you know? I find yeah. between the two worlds. Yeah, there's different characters, the different characters that people want to relate to or not relate yeah. to. You know, it's a world. It's a fun world to be a part of. 
we we're not getting higher than that. We're not getting higher than that. That is incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Um, real quick, I want to touch on Muppets Most Wanted. Uh, oh, yeah. And I want to about how you guys were so hospitable. I make up words a lot, but I think that's a word. That's I'm, a nice uh, word. That means perfect. we were uh, we were you, uh, uh, okay. accepting, accepting, yeah, accepting yeah. of my questions, of just me fanboying of everything. And I don't know if that happens a lot on sets with actors. One of my favorite things was. We could never shoot on time because Danny Trejo was interacting with Muppets constantly, <laughs> constantly. And we would literally just be like, what are we doing? And Ray Liotta's, Danny's doing it again. Danny's doing it again. He's doing it again. And I go, what do you mean he's doing it again? He goes, he's talking to a Muppet, Dylan. I don't know why he's doing this. He's just, he just won't stop. And it was so much fun. But oh every God. shot we did with me, and Ray Liotta and Danny Trejo was never on time because right. he was always sidetracked on the way to the scene. Always entertaining people. He's always yes. talking. He's always very, you know, he's very sociable. He loved engaging with people. I used to, I remember on the set, I watched, I was just, we were on a break where I was looking around and I was, I looked over, I saw Danny and he's like doing bits with people. He's like entertaining. Right? Everything was a stand-up act yeah. at all times. And then I look and I see Jermaine and Jermaine has his headset on. He's, he's rehearsing, right? He's very focused and he's doing his steps. And, uh, and then I look, I'm looking, I'm thinking, I'm looking around. I'm thinking, oh, I don't see Ray anywhere. I didn't see you. I don't know where you were, whatever you were doing. But I looked at, and I looked over to the side. There was, I don't know if you remember in that stage, Yes. There were stairs that went all the yep. way up along the side of the wall yes. to the lighting grid. Yep. And I looked, and there's Ray sitting at the top of the stairs up, up near the lighting grid. And I was like, what's he doing? That's interesting. Danny's entertaining people. Jermaine is rehearsing. Let me go see what he's doing. So I walk, make my way. I get up, I get up to the top. I go, Ray, how you doing? And I'm thinking he's going to go, you know, life. I'm thinking he's going to have some kind of, <laughs> you know, philosophical wisdom and he no. goes he goes what's the name of that girl with the blonde hair that <laughs> yes no. i was like it's Ray. It's Ray. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. we, uh so my friends when the when Muppets Most Wanted was coming out, they go, "You were with Ray Liotta. You were like with him." Oh man, what a naming, guy! Naming this movie and this movie, and I go, "You mean Ray Liotta from Muppets from Space?" And they literally look at me. And they go, "That that?" I go, "Yes, that's how I know Ray Liotta." And they go, "Geez," yeah. but it's it. That's how I don't watch movies. I. They have, right. It's Disney Muppets, or it's got to make me laugh. That's the only movies right. I've seen. Like. So it's funny to me, and it makes complete sense. It's that's the only movie I know Ray Liotta from. That's right. And funny. then with your story, I brought uh, Danny and Ray to one of the WWE events. Oh. And Ray afterwards, of course. Wow. How about those gals? <laughs> those gals can really move in the ring. And I'm going, yeah, they can wrestle. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they can move, he said. <laughs> and yeah, I yeah. just laughed. It was, he was yep. the best. Them two yeah, were so boy. much fun to be around because they were so sweet. The we, sweetest. But they would poke each touch. other. They would poke each other so much. Like just oh, yeah. get each other going, especially at our when we had those dance rehearsals yeah. for the choreography. They would just get on each other. Oh, you missed that one. Yeah. Like yeah. That, yeah. 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 We we did actually uh keep in touch. We would do like every six months or so. Yeah. I would just call and just say, What are you doing? You know, yep. and he was like, oh, nothing. What are you doing? And we just have a quick chat and just say yeah. hey. And he was really a really sweet guy. Really sweet Such guy. a sweet guy compared to the roles he's played. Like, Oh, my God, yeah. Just And just fun and almost at times a dry sense of humor, but he would get a zinger in. And uh -huh. you'd, you'd almost like, was that a joke? Because like, he has hey. a stern face. Oh, yeah, he's smiling oh, now. Really I can sad. laugh, too. Like, yeah. 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 So much fun. After that, uh, one of the 
biggest things to me, and it had to feel pretty big to you guys, two concerts and like live Muppet shows, mm. the the Hollywood Bowl and then Muppets at the O2, which yeah. that's in itself is such a I mean, it's a it's it's a live stage show. It's a live focused Muppet show. on you guys. Yes, it's a live Muppet show focused on you guys and no no like cuts or anything it's just a it's a it's a broadway show with like by the muppets how did that was that just a hey let's try this uh kind of i mean ultimately yeah was let's see what happens yeah uh we think we can do it um but i think it started because we had such an amazing reception at outside lands uh when the band the mayhem band just went to play with they the outside lens was like, yeah, you guys want to come and do a set, you know? And we went and did 25 minutes of, uh, of music. And, and, and actually it was a good train. It was kind of a good little training ground because we realized we couldn't maintain that long, right? We can't go a solid 25 minutes with our arms in the air and perform and be great. Yeah. And if we are, and, um, so it was all about how do we do that? And so we, Jane Gutnick came up with these rigs that help keep our arms up in the air for a long oh, wow. time. And then we also, working with Soapbox Films uh, and Kirk, we came up with, and Jim Lewis, came up with video pieces that would play in between every couple songs. So it would give us a chance to rest, you know, for to a few reset minutes. the set too. No, the set. The set no, for, oh, the set for, stayed. For Outside Lands, it was just... Oh, outside, okay, Outside Lands. Outside lands. Yeah, okay, sorry, okay. this is Outside Lands. Yeah, that's okay. So this was like the training ground for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so when you see, and they, apparently this is true, but they, because they count, they know how many people are at these things and where people are at a certain time. But there were literally, they said 30,000 people watching Outside Lands, oh, watching trick, man. the Mayhem Band play. And we, I guess, just thought, well... Maybe they'll come watch a Muppet show. If they're going to watch that, they're going to come watch a Muppet show, you know? Oh, man. And so a few years later, we started talking about how do we do a show? And, and uh, yeah, it was all about that design. How many, how how often are we up? You know, who gets a yep. break? When when are people in? When are they out? Yeah. It was all about that because you can't just have one person keep going the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, so the script and the show was based on musical moments uh video moments um guest coming in guest you know guest uh, appearances yeah um and i think it worked out pretty well you know was, there's so much fun to watch like yeah. like there's there's so much fun and it's just it again it brings the nostalgia to today mm. people like like current fans who didn't get to see the muppet show live or even muppets tonight live this right. is their there this is their muppet show yeah yeah for sure and it, in a it live like setting we we tried to pay tribute to the muppet show you know we did yeah musical numbers that were from the muppets yep. history and uh i'd like to do it again i think it was really a lot of fun so as we're wrapping up i have to ask a certain thing because i've gotten into it uh with i'm muppet sorry fans. i have to go now good good uh your who do you consider the so disney has the fab five the mickey the mini the pluto the donald the goofy okay yeah. who do you consider the muppet fab five i mean i guess i guess they would consider them i mean it wouldn't be necessarily my choice but i think that's the that's the back and that's the second the back end of the question oh right well so the fat i guess the fat five would be let me say kermit piggy yep yep Fozzy, gonzo and this is the hard one <laughs> that i get into it with people and uh rolf maybe ha i see i think it's animal oh animal okay yeah right yeah a lot of people Pe i mean people love animal you're right people argue scooter and i was like I mean, Scooter. Fab Ten, oh, but right. Fab Five. Who are your Fab Five then? Personal Fab Five. Over the years, if if you have to pick five today, 
Oh, ah, oh, well, oh. I'll give you my favorite five. Perfect. Whether it was when I was growing up or yeah, now. uh, Guy Smiley, yep, from Sesame Street. Um, I love Rolf the dog, mm-hmm. not because it's I perform him, but Jim's, yeah. Um, uh, Gonzo. Mm-hmm. I love um, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Scre- uh, is it Scred? Do you know the old thing that was on Saturday Night Live? Um, when the Muppets were on Saturday Night Live, the first season. You ever I seen can't that? Picture this. No. No, I've never seen this one. Oh my God! You got no. Kubis. You got to look. You got to Google it. Is that the? Is that like the sex? And, no, that's. It has to be way after the sex and violence era. Yeah, it, it was not way after. No, this was like no? the first year of Saturday Night Live, and the Muppets were on, but they weren't Kermit and them. They were these uh, like creatures on another planet. Yep. One was a king. His name is King Plubus. I love mm-hmm. him. See, now I'm losing my list. Uh, but Jerry Nelson did a character. His name is Scred, I think. Great character. Mm-hmm. And the mighty Fravog, which was just a stone head. Yep. And that was Frank. Um, I don't know. You know what? I can't pick five. It's too hard. That's too many favorites. Yeah. Because it, one comes up and then you're thinking about, okay, well, these four, then I got to pick one more. Uncle Deadly is oh, yeah. top five for me every time and he's so overlooked and then then the muppets sit the abc the muppets came out and they gave it was like a f- uncle deadly was such a focus i was like thank god this yeah, is he really so awesome he yeah. really grew on he like that. shined he shined yeah. in that show as so much as the character fun. can so fun. well awesome uh well upcoming you have what i'm looking forward to probably in the top muppets production because it's the Muppets Mayhem, focusing on Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem Band, who to me are some of the most, not even, not overlooked, but I love that we're putting a focus on these characters because I felt for so long, they're such an awesome act in itself and supporting other, the whole, the whole uh, brand. Can you tell, what, what can you tell a talk about it at all? Um. Well, you know, like we started to touch on the band in the last series mm-hmm. and get to know them a little bit, like some new things kind of came up, you know, but which that series, series was so much fun. It was so that series was so much fun. And so like it felt like The Office, yet uh, an inside reality show. It was so yeah. different. It was so different. Yeah, I thought there were some great things in it. I Overall, wasn't like my favorite, but I think we had some really fun episodes and some really fun mm-hmm. routines and musical numbers and sketch. You know, it was it had its yeah. great it had great moments. Yeah, really. And and to, like you said, to see Uncle Deadly come out of that and shine so much was amazing. Um, and Scooter grew out of that more. Yep. Um, but uh, it's the Muppets. What's fun? I think fun about the Muppets, ma'am, is that um, people I think are going to really enjoy some more backstory about these characters that they've never heard before. Yes. You know, yes. we, you get to know them. Uh, you're going to get to know them more than ever. Um, working with Adam Goldberg and Jeff Yorks yeah. and kind of creating this thing, this partnership that we have, the three of us um, co-created it together and, and really took great care in thinking about story arcs and the relationships and, and not just between the band, but through the human characters, our main cast in the series, who are phenomenal. Where do you see these actors are so good? Like some of the best interaction I've really? seen with humans and Muppets. Yeah. That's just awesome. really everybody is phenomenal. Awesome. Um, and I'm not just blowing smoke. Like I, I no. mean that. No, I was just every day watching the choices that they would make and the subtlety of what they would do. And so funny and so poignant and the thing just has hearts and it's got music and it's got comedy and it's got conflict and it's like a big long movie you know and you get to see it in half hour pieces or something how many do we how many episodes are are were shot you know 10 
Yeah. Oh, so this there's there's substance to it. That's even better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's no, there's awesome. It's a big awesome. fun fun story, and uh, I I really hope I I think people are gonna like it. I I I can tell you that the Muppet performers loved doing it. So if that means anything, did it feel like a different production, like more of a almost heartfelt? Um, getting deeper on these characters that might not have a light shown on them. Uh, did it, was it a different feeling than other productions? Well, I mean, I think in other productions, we tried it always with the Muppets, you know, you're yeah. always trying to find their hearts and their stories and, and what makes them tick and all that stuff. But I think it was fun because we didn't have a lot of backstory on them. Yeah. You know, we knew who they were and we have an, yep. we have an understanding of who they are. And, and I think maybe Floyd might have had the most backstory just because Jerry Nelson talked to Matt about it before he passed away. And, and yeah. you know, they, they discussed it a lot. But even Dave Gulls, who created Zoot originally, right, because really the only original performer in the band now is Dave, Dave. is Zoot. Yep. Um, he wasn't even sure what he was, what Zoot, where Zoot came from, what his, what how he should play in this, you know? And so he found new things and we found new things together with him. And oh, um, there's just, it was just a great experience, I think for everybody. And to have people like Adam and, and Jeff, who are big fans of the Muppets, their, their respect for them and the, yeah. the sense of, wanting them to have great integrity for these characters, you know, the integrity of the characters and maintaining that integrity, but then having the fun twisted comedy sense, yeah. you know, uh, yep. is, was just so much fun to get together and try and plot this out. And I think I ended up kind of being the arbiter a little bit of, you know, well, the Muppets might not do that or the Muppets might not, do, you know, I kind of had to be that guy occasionally, yeah. which, uh, you know, I don't mind, but um, it's it's we just found a way to make it work. And I think people are going to love it. You know, we and so many people again, so many people on this production just were amazing. Our, our a lot of great celebrity guests we're, we have uh, cameos. Um, our crew was phenomenal. Our producers, the Muppet Studios, ABC Signature, Disney Plus, like everybody was just so excited about this thing and that i just couldn't i had to pinch myself you know yeah that's awesome yeah. well bill thank you this has been so much fun and thank so you. uh incredible to uh to do and to be able to sit down with someone that's turned into a a long distance buddy and and it's thank you for real. Yeah, I wish you stop bothering me, though. You know, it's, it's enough already. I always, I always do. <laughs> no, you do not. Thank it's you. So good. I'm, I'm so happy to do this awesome. with you. I really appreciate you asking me to do this. Yeah, man. Uh, and I love it's seeing a, you. I love seeing you. We uh, when I'm when I'm out by you, we're making it happen. We're going Please. to dinner. We're going into yeah. dinner. Your treat. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, good. Of course. I <laughs> so, well, thank I you. I insist on you not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, also, just realized. I never recorded the outro. I just said thanks and goodbye. So make sure, like always, to like, comment, subscribe, smash the bell, all that jazz, and keep supporting the channel. We love you. We love having you here. We love producing these videos, and we have a lot of cool things happening real, real soon. Thanks.